Hey everyone, my name is Ryan and I am a first year student at the University of Toronto right now. I did my undergrad at U of T and um, this is my portfolio. So it's on issue if any of you guys want to look at it afterwards, but I'm just going to walk us through it. Is it? Is it okay? Can everyone see it? Yeah, it seems um, to be working good. Okay. So I just started off with the title page for the actual portfolio. I made it a bit more simple. Um, I'll show it to you guys later, but um, I just started off with this resume and this is kind of pretty much similar to the resume that I used to apply to grad schools. The only thing that I took out when I applied to grad schools was the skills section here. Um, while I was making it, I just, uh, Got some professors to check it over, uh, especially the writing center. They can help you um, work on the resume. I think they also had some workshops on how to write a resume or a CV. And then I just went to my table of contents. I just had five projects. Um, so my first project is Homesick. It was my uh, student residence for ARC 361. And I start off each project with kind of this hero section. There's this big image, the image that I think is like the most strong in my project. So I recommend starting each project with a really strong image on the left. Um, it doesn't have to be a rendering. I think I just really like to make rendering. So it could be a rendering, a really nice model photo, a really nice drawing. But yeah, I just started off and then I just have the title of the project and just a quick description of the project. Um, so next I had a precedent study. So for this class, we just had to draw a room. So I kind of use that as the precedent study. And then on the right, I have a um, six concept diagrams um, showcasing how I came up with the form. Uh, I think looking back on this, if I were to rework this, I would probably add more research, which I think is um, something you guys should add um, a lot in your portfolio, just to showcase how you came up with your designs and more maybe of your design process. So after that, I just have a planned drawing on the left and then a concept diagram on the right, showcasing the modularity of the building that I made and the concept of how the building can be assembled. And then continuing, I have another concept diagram showcasing how the um, each module can be put in using these cranes, as well as a section drawing on the right, um, showcasing how this building is sitting on top of the existing student residence Trinity College and how it kind of connects. Um, after that, I just have a nice section perspective, just kind of show how um, the building looks in section as well as the site context and how people might occupy the space. And then I just have a isometric drawing to showcase the program of the building, as well as a rendering and a physical site model we did. And then after that, I have a competition that I did with a friend. Um, I would highly recommend doing competitions in your undergrad. Um, it's a nice way to get a project into your portfolio, and um, it could be a fun experience as well. So I did this in the summer with one of my friends from Ryerson, and it's just nice to do um, these competitions because you can work with people from other schools and see um, kind of what they bring to the table. So for me, my friend is from Ryerson, and I think they have more of a technical and structural background. So it kind of worked because I feel like U of T's program is more conceptual. Um, so it was nice to see or work on a project with a different set of eyes. So I just, um, similar to my first project, I just have this rendering on the left as like the hero image and then the same stuff, the title and the, just a pair, some paragraphs describing the project. Um, and then we just have a plan drawing and a quick exploded diagram to showcase the materials as well as the, how I came up with the form of the building and then just a um, sectional perspective. And then my next project is my ARC 201. Um, so for this project, I want us to focus on more of the kind of iterative modeling and how we came up with the ge uh, geometry. So more of the design process. So I think for this project, um, because you have an assignment one and assignment two, I'm not sure if it's still the same now, but you can put your assignment one and assignment two as kind of this method of how you 
um, we're exploring these different design processes and then how you finally came up with your design at the end. So yeah, so I just have those, some model photographs of that um, as well as some drawings and then just some more model photos and a rendering just to show the interior perspective. Um, I think interior renderings are actually very helpful for um, showcasing your projects because um, it kind of like shows the experience that someone has walking through your space. Um, so for my fourth project, I think this is my fourth, um, I did a design build in the summer. I would highly recommend doing a design build if you get the chance. It's just a very fun experience. Um, over the summer, we went to Prince Edward County and um, there we just built this beach gate house for the community. And yeah, it was really fun. It was really great. Um, my prof was Zach and he was, he was a great prof. And for this project, I just showcased um, the different elements of the building as well as it was a six day process. So I showed day one, day two, day three, four, five, six of how we came up with the building and just kind of um, this, um, showcasing the process a lot. And after that, I just kind of showcased some images of the building and how it's transportable. Um, what I would recommend is if you're going to do a design build or if you have a project with a lot of photographs is to kind of make all your images look the same so I just went into like Lightroom and Photoshop just to make sure all the images were looking the same and then for my last project I have Arc 361 I did a we call it the courtyard house and it's um for this project I want to showcase how I did a precedent study and how, kind of how this precedent influenced my final design so then I just showcase some more research, um, just maybe some like a isometric of the site um, with some interviews of some people um, on the site, as well as um, here I added a site plan and some more plans because uh, throughout my portfolio, I didn't think I had a lot of plans. So I think it's good to sh make sure you showcase every um, drawing or at least like the basic ones, like just show that you know how to draw sections and plans. Um, and after that, just more section perspectives and some renderings. And then I have a collage and then I just finish it off with some more model photos. Yeah. And um, I also have one more portfolio. Um, I don't think it's showing up. Let me see if I can share it. Um, because I know when you apply to other schools, um, they have different page requirements. So this was a portfolio that I used to apply to um, Columbia because they only take 20 pages. So yeah, this was the actual um, page um, that I used for my portfolio. I just wanted to keep it very simple. So it's very similar and um, the table of contents is the same. It's just a much shorter format. So I kept this project pretty much the same. Um, this is the same. Now this is different um, because it's only 20 pages. I tried to fit my plans as well as my concept diagrams into one page here. And then I kept this the same. And then for this project, I made the hero section um, the same here. And then that was um, that allowed me to make this project only two pages instead of the three it was originally. Um, after that, I just kept my R2 one the same. And then for the design build, I also shortened it down to two images, I mean, two pages. So kind of just compressing everything together. So maybe this might help. This is how I personally compressed everything, just making some images smaller and things that are less important, um, just take them out. Um, and then for the final project, I also shortened it here with the precedent study on one page and then all of the plan drawings on this other page on the right and then i kept this the same this the same and then i just put the collage down here and yeah so that's the portfolio